Hey, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. So one of the things I talk a lot about in my videos is delivering like a professional and client experience and so forth and how important that is because in any service industry, which if you don't know as a freelancer, you are in the service uh, business, but the way that you have success long term in a service industry is through repeat business and referrals. And the way that you get repeat business and referrals is pro by providing top notch customer service to your clients. But it's not good enough to just be good at what you do, to just be talented. There's a lot of other things that go into the overall experience, how well you communicate with your clients, if you deliver on time, how pleasant you are to talk to and work with. If you do the things that you say you're going to do and are reliable and your word counts for something, how well you listen to your clients, all the intangible things that tend to be obvious when you're applying for a regular nine to five job, they all still matter when you're freelancing and it all feeds into the client experience and their perception of you. And if you can nail that, they're just not going to be able to help it. You're going to be remarkable in a way that just they feel the urge to talk about you and tell people about how great you are. And they're certainly going to come back to you if they ever need that freelance service again. So that's the way to repeat business and referrals. And there's a lot of things that go into it. But in my 15 plus years of doing this, I found that there, there tends to be two X factors when it comes to client experience. So things that if you nail these two things, they can almost override everything else. Not completely, but everything else can be kind of mediocre. But if you nail these two things, then that can get you to the point of a client saying, wow. Damn. The first one is delivering faster than expected. If you deliver faster than a client expects, it is the simplest way to make them love you because it just doesn't happen in most industries. In fact, most clients will come into your project assuming that whatever you tell them in terms of time is just going to take longer than that. That's kind of their automatic assumption. So if you can buck that expectation and deliver sooner than they're expecting, you're going to have a loyal client for life. Now, one of the tricks here that I've kind of learned over the years is that you actually play a big big role in setting those expectations because you tell them how long it's going to take. So a lot of times what freelancers will do is they'll kind of look at how long something's going to take and they're going to say, okay, it'll take two weeks and they'll tell the client two weeks. Or they might even say, ooh, ooh you know, it's going to be tough to get it in a week, but I'll tell them a week in order to get the client to hire them. But that ultimately ends up backfiring you, backfiring on you in the end, because if you take longer than what you say, that kills the repeat business and the referral. And that's the thing that really matters most more than the new new client necessarily. So that can be a little bit tricky when especially when you're first starting out. But my advice to you is focus on the long term, focus on the, the, the referral, the repeat business. And the way that you do that is to set expectations properly. So a lot of my projects I could deliver in about two weeks, but I always told the client a month and then I would just deliver earlier than I expected. Even if I got delayed or ran into a problem, it took me an extra week. I was still delivering in three weeks, which was sooner than what I had told them. And you do have to pay attention to your your market a little bit. You know, I knew that most other people were going to tell tell them a month, at least probably even two months for them to complete the project. So I knew I was well within the competitive range in terms of a month. So you got to pay attention to that. But usually there's some wiggle room there, and if you set that expectation correctly and set yourself to deliver up sooner than what you tell them, sooner what, than what they're expecting, that's gonna make them loyal to you, that's gonna make them come back to you and they're not even gonna look at anybody else in the future. That's what you want. Okay, the second thing then is to communicate proactively. So a lot of times clients, they, they simply have to drag updates out of their freelancer. You know, we have a tendency, especially you know, me as a web developer, we, we, we tend to cave up and go in, our, in incognito mode with a project because we're trying to focus on it and get it done and, and get it knocked out to them. So it makes sense, but it drives clients absolutely insane. And the thing that you have to remember is even though they hired you, they're still terrified that you're going to just take their money and, and they'll never hear from you again. If this is the first time that you're working with them throughout the entire project, they're going to be worried about that. Uh, and so you, you have to make sure that, that you're communicating consistently because the less you communicate, the more that fear gets ratcheted up and they're going to begin pestering you for updates. If you've been working with clients and it's more than one client 
and they've been pestering you for updates and you kind of are getting annoyed by that, that's really on you. That's a sign to you that you're not communicating enough. You're not commuting pro communicating proactively enough and you need to step up in that regard. It, you know, it may be more than what you think you need to, but that's just your industry. And so you're just going to have to kind of step up. So if you're pro on the other side, if you're proactive in how you communicate, you email them and give them updates without them asking. You do it more often than what they seem to be expecting. The, the biggest thing or the first thing is it's going to keep those 9 p.m. on a Sunday. Hey, can we jump on a call? It's going to keep kind of all of that stuff in check um, because the, the fear hasn't got to that point where they feel like they need to do that. But you're also going, again, to create that loyalty that's going to make them want to come back to you. Now, what's interesting about these is any one of these two things on its own can actually get you to that point where people will remark about you and be like, wow. But if you put these two things together, it, it's it's sort of like dynamite. Like it can really catapult the client experience and really create some deep loyalty with your clients. So. Again, there's a lot that goes into client experience, but if you nail those two things, they tend to override everything else. It doesn't mean don't pay attention to everything else, but just be sure you really focus on speed and communication. And if you do and you nail it, your clients are going to love you. Uh.